Don't mess with truckers. I've said it all along. Truckers now taken on the world from the streets of Ottawa now to the south of France. They are making their voices heard and we're with them. Freedom matters. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Trish Regan Show. We are brought to you today in part by Legacy Precious Metals. You know, there's never been a better time to invest in precious metals. So go to LegacyPMInvestments.com today. Again, LegacyPMInvestments.com today because inflation is on the rise, right? We're going to get to this, the misery index proving just how tough it is out there and miserable people are. The misery index, we got to talk about that because it's, uh, it's continuing to rise. And I'll tell you, with inflation coming out tomorrow, I expect it's going to get even worse. But before we get to that, I want to go back to the Freedom Convoy here, which is now going global. They're on the streets of Nice, hundreds of people gathering, again, to champion freedom in light of the fact that France is doing even more than we are here in the U.S. or even more than Canada. Meanwhile, in Canada, for goodness sakes, and 78 year old man, a grandfather, four foot 10, small guy, right? He was arrested for honking his car horn in support of the truckers in Ottawa. This is going too far, I'm sorry, but this is a moment in time that I think we, we should all remember and we should all respect because truckers right now are taking on the very essence of, of what it is to be American or even Canadian or anyone in the Western world where you should have the ability to peacefully protest. And that's what they're doing. They've been peacefully protesting. But you see, peaceful protests now in the light of the government, in the, in the eyes of the government, are somehow now, I don't know, acts of aggression, dare I even say, I mean, it's disgusting to even say this. I, I addressed this on yesterday's podcast, but you get DHS, the Department of Homeland Security, actually saying that all this misinformation, disinformation, malinformation, mis, dis, and mal, call it what you want. They're calling it all of the above, um, is somehow leading or will lead to terror problems. I, I, I just, I hate even saying those words because it's um, so disturbing. But what this is, is suggesting really is that the government is coming in and they're saying, okay, we don't like your politics. And because we don't like your politics, you're now a risk to the country. You're a risk to the safety of those around you. That's going too far, guys. And you see it really with the truckers, for example, right? The truckers on the streets of Canada that are, you know, being accused of all this violence when they're, at least from, from all documentation thus far, there has been none. Yet... When you make a donation via GoFundMe, GoFundMe wants to take that money away. They, they tried to steal like $10 million from the truckers that was being donated because the Canadian authorities were coming in and saying, no, 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 this is, this is a, a bad protest. I'm sorry, what's the difference between a good protest and a bad protest? I remember some pretty, what I would classify as bad protests, violent protests with Black Lives Matter during the summer of 2020. But at that point it was okay. You see why? Oh, because there's a political reason for it. The left is okay with those protests. They're just not okay with the truckers having anything to say about it. Truckers who can't earn a living because of all these COVID restrictions. Well, you're starting to see now the Canadian government in some provinces back down from this. And, and that is such a a glorious thing to see because it shows that the people have a voice and together collectively we can have a voice. I think that's sort of the, the optimism that you, know, you need to walk away from the table with, that we can as much as big government right, is trying to infringe upon our rights and they'll, believe me, it's not over. Okay, it's just so not over. This, this warning from DHS, and by the way, Mallorcas said he was gonna do this just a few weeks ago, I warned of this on the podcast. I quoted Mallorca as saying, well, there's something we can do about this. Well, this is apparently what he's going to do about it. So, you know, good luck on all your social media platforms. All the more reason why. I'm telling you, it is so important. If the one thing that you, you get done today um, is this, I'll, I'll be so proud of you. Go over to Locals. I'm at trishregan.locals.com. Trishregan.locals.com. It is the one social media safe haven, effectively, right now, where we can communicate back and forth together. I like it as a platform because it's kind of like a combination of Rumble, Twitter, YouTube, all kind of combined into one. It's, it's a neat place. It's a special place. It's uh, affiliated 
of course, with Rumble. So locals and Rumble, they're all one big happy family. I encourage you to go there. Go to my locals channel. I'm actually going to be live on Friday at 12 noon. Normally we do 4 o'clock. This Friday we're going to try a lunch date, 12 noon. So make sure that you're there and, and let's talk about all this together in a productive way. Meanwhile, I, I want to get to what's happening right now on these masks. If you've been following, um, there's kind of a, it, been a backlash, of course, against them. And so now you see num a number of leaders there in the Northeast saying, okay, well, we're going to relax these mandates. I do want to point out that Bloomberg Opinion, Bloomberg Opinion came out today with um, a statement in, in, in which I considered pretty remarkable. And the reason I consider it rather remarkable is because it tends to be a rather leftist publication. I think that they're reading the tea leaves, however, right? I mean, political opinion is not with them on this one. And they know, the left knows that they're going to lose in 2022 with midterms if they continue all this nonsense on masks. People are concerned about kids learning, right? Like, how are you supposed to learn? How can you communicate? How can you read, enunciate, speak, do all these things, talk to each other if you can't even read someone's expression or watch your teacher as she or he is formulating words. Think about those little kids learning to read for the first time. You can't even watch someone's face to see how you make these words. Anyway, it is problematic. And so in Bloomberg opinion, they write, quote, masks are causing more harm than good in schools now that Omicron is waning. So it's time for more states to relax and then end mandates. The evidence that face coverings reduce transmission rates is mixed. Keeping them as a precaution carries costs in terms of a children's or children's social development, their ability to physically uh, have comfort, their physical comfort, recognize others and to learn. Hallelujah. All right. Amen. Did it really take us this long to get there? I mean, come on. So I go back to what I've said all along. This virus has been politicized. Masks have been politicized. Vaccines have been politicized. It's one big political party, right? And everybody is looking out for their sort of, their, their own end game. Nobody's actually looking out for the kids. Nobody's looking out for the people. And that's what's most tragic about all of it. But anyway, it's coming back to bite them in the you know what. Really, the left is going to have to uh, come to terms with this because the American public is absolutely positively not with them. You know, it's a really important year, as I mentioned, 2022, incredibly important year. And there's a lot happening that we really need to address and think about, um, including including all of the, the elections and the, and the policy agendas. I mean, when I look at what the left is trying to do right now, you know what I see? I see a group that is really hungry to spend your money. And if you're an American senior, that's not a good thing because we've got all this inflation happening. When they spend your money, it leads to more inflation. So this is a policy choice that's going to cost you, which is one of the reasons why I like AMAC so, so much. And I want you to join this organization. First of all, there's lots of freebies, right? We always love freebies. Freebies are a really good thing. They have free discounts on hotels, restaurants, airline travel, but importantly, they're going to be looking out for you and your values. Imagine that so many of these groups, AARP is one of them, you know, they, they say they're advocating for America's seniors, but they're not looking out for values that are aligned with yours. AMAC is the conservative alternative. It's looking out for you. It's looking out for American seniors, these are mature citizens, age 50 and up, more than 2 million members now. I want you to become a member too. Go to amac.us slash Regan for your membership. Again, amac.us slash Regan for your membership. Again, lots of free discounts on lots of good things and supporting your values there in Washington, D.C., defending your rights in Washington, D.C., and all through the country. Again, amac.us slash Regan. But again, these leftists, they're finally waking up to the reality that, you know what, this, this whole thing, it's just not going to fly. It's not going to fly because it will cost them big time the election. And whether it's truckers going global from Canada to France, whether it's people saying enough with the masks, whether it's Americans saying we don't want to risk our lives to defend Ukraine's border. 
which by the way, I understand from a lot of different levels, right? I mean, we, we still haven't defended our border. Um, and while we want to make sure that we're looking out for our allies in the world, they also need to look out for themselves, right? It's not like NATO has been kicking in all the money that they need to. This was actually a big, big policy agenda point of Donald Trump. Okay, we'll do our part, but hey, Germany, guess what? You're going to have to do yours. All of Europe, you're going to have to do yours. And so we need the Europeans now to step up and be active on this front. We can't shoulder the entire burden. We have so much to take care of right back here at home. I want to point out we've got the misery index coming up, the misery index. Um, if you don't know what that is, listen up, because with inflation growing in such massive ways, right, we're going to get a read on it this week. It's expected to be upwards of 7%, which is the highest level we have seen since, oh, I don't know, you're going to go all the way back to 1982. Well, when you look at, and this was created under Lyndon Johnson, when you look at inflation and the unemployment rate together, you get what's called the misery index. And you know what? It's now the highest it has been since the aftermath of the 2008 recession, the Great Recession. So even though we have really low unemployment, even though things are seemingly good, you know, with nearly 6% growth there in GDP, the reality is people don't feel very good. They don't feel very good because they don't have as much money because inflation is eating into their spending power. So this is kind of a big deal. It's a very big deal which is one of the reasons why, it's one of the reasons why I keep saying you've got to think about protecting your investments. One way to do that is actually to look at alternative styles of investing. We had my friend Charlie Dombeck on the show the other day. He's a senior partner at Key City Capital. He's been a practicing CPA for over 30 years. If you didn't get a chance to go see that interview, good news, one, you can look at it. Um, on YouTube or on Facebook, and two, he's going to be back on the program with me tomorrow because we want to dissect the inflation report that we're all watching. Anyway, Charlie calls himself a wealth acceleration expert. He basically helps clients to grow their portfolio, grow their wealth, grow their assets by looking at places and, and opportunities and ways for them to save on their tax bills. And He's been really successful on this front um, through passive real estate investment opportunities in landlord friendly states, places like Texas, Florida, Tennessee. So he formed Key City Capital to help clients recover some of the dollars that they're unnecessarily paying in taxes. And that money then goes into this investment fund, which helps you hedge inflation. It's kind of a neat strategy. And I want to talk to him tomorrow a little bit about how you generate cash flow, tax-free cash flow out of that, how you help grow your wealth by saving yourself money, right? As opposed to paying it all to Uncle Sam, or in this case, Uncle Joe. Um, and, and this is gonna be important in light of one, the misery index, two, the inflation numbers we're gonna get tomorrow, and three, the, the growing concern right now that real estate might be coming under pressure. I, I think Charlie will help explain all of this to us. As, as you see the Federal Reserve raise rates, what does that do to one's real estate portfolio? It's gonna have an effect, especially in some states that are most highly affected by those higher tax rates, right? And not just higher tax rates, higher interest rates, but again, higher tax rates because people don't have as much cash in their pockets. You've got so much business relocating to places like Texas and Florida. So how do you as an investor capitalize on that? Charlie can help you. Um, for more, you can go to keycitycapital.com slash Trish. Again, keycitycapital.com slash Trish, or you can tune in to tomorrow's show to make sure you watch Charlie explain it all himself. But you know, there's so much going on. We get the misery index at the highest level since the Great Recession. We've got truckers saying, okay, we've had enough. We've got parents saying, this isn't right. Our kids don't belong in masks all the time. When, by the way, Stacey Abrams from Georgia gets to not wear a mask. We talked about that, right? The queen of hypocrisy that she is. All of these things, they add up right now. And people are worried that their freedoms are being constantly trampled on, all in the name of, well, this is what's good for the country, right? Because if you dare to buck the trend, if you dare 
to disagree with what the left wants you to think, then you're at risk of being labeled some pretty terrible things that I don't even want to say, but you know what the Department of Homeland Security is suggesting, right? Think about that. Think about that. This is not a good time, but you know what? We, we have an opportunity to speak out together. So please, let's join together. Come on to Locals with me, trishregan.locals.com trishregan.locals.com. I'm going to see you there and we are live Friday at noon. Have a terrific day everyone. I'm back here tomorrow and I'll see you Friday on Locals.